Today I want to show and tell how to remove the quill from this Intas tool room mill. As you can see, it has a quill that is made like a, you've seen on a drill press. So it's super convenient when you are drilling holes or similar. This quill can be removed and you can insert another high speed quill with uh, this is a ISO 40 and the high speed is a ISO 30 taper. Compared to a dental or similar style uh, tool room mill, you need to remove or add a completely different head. But here you can change the quill and you, are, you end up with the same result. First I had some doubts how to remove it, but then I talked to a gentleman who um, had sewn these, sewed these machines, so he's very familiar uh, with the, with how you do it. And he showed me, so now I want to show you, so maybe you can uh, learn from that. This handle is the quill lock. And it's used if you are extending the quill, and then you can lock it, and then it won't move. But as the handle is spring-loaded, if you remove the quill, the handle will, will uh, unwind the spring. It will just rotate till all the energy in the spring is out. So what you want to do is um, be sure the, the lock is loose. Now we just tighten it so I can remove the hand. And then you will tighten this knob. This knob will fix the handle itself, not the quill, but the handle, like so. Now you can loosen the, the quill, and then this won't spin. This knob, you need to pull out and twist like so. It will stay out when twisted. This is a key that moves um, along the quill and pre prevent it from twisting or rotate. So you can't remove the quill before you have pulled off this knob and twisted it. And because I have locked this uh, quill handle or shaft, it will, be in, it will stay in the same position when I remove the quill. Let me show you. As you can see, the, the rag is cut all the way through, so you don't need to worry about the, the gear mechanism. You can just um, you can lower it as far as it can, and it will just disengage when it bottoms out. Here you can see the keyway or slot where this knob or key will uh, or need to align into uh, to prevent it from spinning and also it's the, the mechanical stop of the trap.
you can see this um, those blinds. This, these blinds are part of the quill uh, or the spindle, and they need to match up with the, the splines in the quill. So you need to be aware of that, as well as the the key for um, for the quill lock, uh, not the quill lock, the quill guide. You can see, pull out and twist, and now it just fall in to the to the key slot. It takes some time to to get com comfortable changing the quill, and it's a good idea to raise and lower the knee table. So if anything should happen or you should drop anything, it won't land so hard. And also um, apply a piece of uh, foam or, or wood or something not too hard. This is with a normal uh, gear setup, 400 RPMs. Let's try what normally would be thousands RPM. I can't remember, but I think it its maximum is seven or eight thousand RPM. So it's it's way higher than the than what the mill normally can run. And it's 2,500 RPMs. So let's change back to the ISO 40 normal quill. So what we're going to do is loosen the quill block, remove the quill key or quill guide, extend the quill on the way. Just need to lock this and tighten this a little bit so there's a little bit of tension in the quill like so because the quill is now out of the head the only thing holding the the quill handle is as mentioned this lock and that means if you loosen it and turn the handle, you can either loosen or make the spring tighter. You, you can adjust the, the tension of the spring, so to say, depending on what tool you are use, using. If you're using a, a large um, uh, facing or boring head and using the, the quill, it can be a, a solution to help the, the quill move up. Uh, if it's too loose, it will uh, pull the quill down. Watch downwards, but it's of course a personal preference and depending on what type of job uh, you're doing. Then you push up the quill, and if it won't match with the, the spines, then just wiggle a little. That's there. Now it's up against the handle or the, the pinion rack. The brake is not 100% tight, it's a little bit loose. That way, I can still move it, but it won't spin by itself. So, as you can see, the, the quill rack or gear is engaged with the quill. The key is in the quill as well. And then it's time just to loosen this quill handle brake. And then it should move up freely. This mill has seen very little use. That's why the inside of the quill housing and the quill is almost like brand new. And that's why it feels a little tight when you are removing it and pulling it back together. Uh, it binds a little bit when bottoming out. But I think the spring could use a little more tension, especially when using a, a large tool on the quill uh, on spindle, like a big boring head or something. So what I want to do is 
Make sure the quill lock is loose. Remove the quill uh, key. Tighten the quill lock, quill lock, quill handle lock, so it won't spin. But as uh, loose as um, I can still uh, spin it around. Then I will remove the or turn the handle until it's getting loose. Turn a little bit more, and then pull it back together again. Up, uh, push it up again. Then make sure the the key is in the keyway. Loosen the quill uh, quill lock here. On the way, make sure it's free, and then you have either tighten it or loosen the spring. I hope uh, this makes sense and uh, and that the video can be used for something. Thanks for watching. This is just a size comparison. You can see the ISO 40 versus the ISO 30. Yeah.